going to be talking to Gerald Salenti. He's on the line with us right now. Gerald Salenti, of course, is uh, the author of uh, Trends Journal. And you can find that at trendsresearch.com. He's a forecaster, publisher of Trends Journal, business consultant, author who makes predictions about the global financial markets. And, of course, he had a very interesting prediction. That's why we wanted to have him on uh, several years ago about what's going on right now with Saudi Arabia and Yemeni. He predicted that, quote, cross-border fighting between Saudi Arabia and Yemeni rebels is precisely the type of conflict that could destabilize the world's oil markets. Should the fighting intensify the Saudis' risk and attack on their oil facilities, which could curtail supplies, drive prices higher, and seriously damage the already imperiled world economy. So joining us now is Gerald Salenti. Welcome, Gerald. Thank you for having me. Interesting forecast, and it's interesting what's happened this last week uh, with uh, Saudi Arabia going after the Yemeni rebels. Uh, break that down for the audience, exactly what's happened there and uh, what you think is going to be the consequences of that. Yes, that quote that you uh, read was from our Trends Journal back in 2009. Mm. And the, the Houthi uh, uh, insurgency in Yemen, this has been going on for decades. And what people don't understand is that you know, this all began with the carve up of the uh, Ottoman Empire after World War I, and there's destabilization in that area ever since. So this isn't a new occurrence. But David, what's going on is being sold to the public as Houthis with the Iranians, and the <laughs> Sunnis, or you know, they're the Saudis, and they're the good folks that the United States is helping on this deal. Here is the outrage and the overt imperialism that's happening in this country and colonization that we have no part of. The clown that plays ambassador to the United States from Saudi Arabia made the announcement last week, you know where from? No, not the capital of Saudi Arabia, from the capital of the United States, Washington. Mm. This guy gets on the news out of Washington, D.C. I mean, we're talking about, okay, boys and girls, if you believe that the, ki the, prince, the princess kissed the frog and the frog was really the king, then you'll like the name the king of Saudi Arabia. But how about let's calling him a dictator? Yeah. This country, yeah. that these, this family has been ruling this joint. They make the announcement that the uh, king and the uh, royal family is going to restore the, the guy Hadi, who the United States and Saudi Arabia propped up there in Yemen as the new dictator following the old dictator. They call it, quote, the legitimate government. Now let's get this straight. Saudi Arabia is one country, Yemen's another country. Who is Saudi Arabia to say what should be going on in Yemen? Mm -hmm. So you can, mm -hmm. you can see what's going on here. And again, this was done from the United States. It's a disgrace that they let this clown address out from the Washington, D.C. that Saudi Arabia is going to restore the legitimate government of Yemen. What, are they going to do it in between beheading people? What, did they behead about 34 already this year? The, the dictatorship of Saudi Arabia is saying what should be going on in Yemen? And the United States is providing intelligence and reconnaissance information to help the king. Oh, yeah, they're absolutely joined at the hip, uh, the, the U.S. intelligence agencies in Saudi Arabia. I thought it was interesting, uh, Glenn Greenwald, I'll paraphrase him here, but it, in terms of this announcement, you know, as you pointed out, the amazing announcement that they don't, they, they announced that they're invading into Yemen, not from the capital of Saudi Arabia, but from Washington. And Glenn Greenwald said, you know, you're pretty far into an empire when they start a new war and it isn't even newsworthy. They don't even pick this information up throughout most of the uh, news cycle press. No, and, and then look, look what else is going on. You have 10 other countries, the so-called Arab League, that overthrew Gaddafi, destabilizing Syria. You know, this thing's been going on for how long? And now they're invading another country. 
And people don't have any idea of the history of this. I want to read to you two quotes to put this into context because the prostitute media, or as Alex Jones called them, the media whores, and I'm 100% behind them, they're media whores. They're no more than lowlifes that suck up, bow down to pass out the information that's given to them so they could serve their corporate whores, their corporate whore masters. And, and, the, and the Washington Johns. This is, from, this is from the former American ambassador to Yemen. All right, so now here's a guy that you would expect to toe the line. His name is Stephen Sechi, S-E-C-H-E. And he said that the Houthis had rarely had rarely defined their struggles in Yemen in sectarian terms and that their ties to Iran had been overstated by Gulf nations. Quote, the Saudis and the Sunnis have made this a sectarian issue, he said. This military campaign is the Sunni world saying to Iran, get out of our backyard. As he's saying here, there is no connection. To further make the non-connection between Iran and the Houthis, this is from Philip Hammond, the British Foreign Secretary. He said last Friday, the Houthis are not Iranian proxies. So, you're hearing it right from the top, but they're selling it as that, so we could easily hate them because Iranians bad them Saudis are good. I mean, after all, <laughs> you saw our president bow down and kiss the Saudis ring. You saw all of these uh, past secretary of states go over and salute the new king. You think that everybody would be going there to, to, to uh, kiss the ring of the beheader in chief if their major export was broccoli? The immorality of this is disgusting. Yeah, it's amazing that, uh, you know, we've seen these uh, beheading videos from ISIS. Many of them look uh, very staged. But there are real beheadings going on in Saudi Arabia constantly. They've beheaded far more people than ISIS or ISIL ever have. And yet there are hard and fast allies. I think it's also interesting, Gerald, that nobody in America and the general public, they, they look at this as some monolithic uh, Muslim state. And they, they have no idea of the differences and the infighting that's going on with these, with these different factions within Islam, between the Sunnis, the Shias, the Wahhabists. Uh, they have no idea what's behind that. They have no idea about the geopolitical alliances that are being made with the U.S., with Saudi Arabia. Uh, they're just going with whatever they're told on Fox News. And Fox News and all the rest. Mm -hmm. I mean, you read every one of these articles, and it's Iranian back Houthis. Yeah. And it's the furthest thing from the truth. This thing has been going on now for decades. The revolution really began to break out in the 1960s. And you've had this guy the, the, who left Salah. He was, uh, he was dictator-in-chief from 1990 to 2011. You know, so this thing's been going on for a long time. And by the way, back in the 60s, Egypt tried to invade Yemen. Now, remember, this is the poorest country in the area. You know, these Saudis are bombing the place. They're bombing mud huts. They've killed over, I think it's about 120 people already. And, and it's civilians. So when the Saudis tried to do it, they call it... I mean, the Egyptians, when they tried to invade back in the 60s, they called it the Egyptian Vietnam. <laughs> Egypt lost about 26,000 men. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and back when I wrote that piece in the Trends Journal that you quoted from, you already saw the Saudis try to invade that area of northern Yemen where it borders the Saudi uh, border. And they lost about 140 men. The Saudis did. So nobody, this, now here's the blowback, David, that no one's talking about. You know, as they used to say in the Bronx, payback's a bitch. You're blowing up this joint. You have several million Yemenis living in Saudi Arabia. All of a sudden, you're going to start seeing what they're going to call terrorist attacks. 
in Saudi Arabia. So all of a sudden they start blowing up oil fields, or blowing up the kings, people, and you're going to see this thing really start to expand. Yeah, and we've that's already what seen. Not talking about. We've already seen a lot of the American drone strikes done by Obama into Yemen, haven't we? Yes, and again, that's the reason why. Another reason why they hate us. Mm -hmm. But hey, Obama. I mean, you know, this is. It's all against international law. There is inter no international law. Hey, where's the United Nations on this deal? What if all of a sudden the Secretary General has locked jaw? You got 10 countries invading a sovereign nation who's done nothing to those other countries, and there's no outrage? All they could keep talking about is this. You know, this German airliner that went down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but all these other people being slaughtered and an attack by foreign nations into another nation, that's not making the news in an area that has become totally destabilized with the war in Iraq, the war in Libya, the war in Syria, now in Yemen. And oh, in Egypt, by the way, they're getting reinvolved in this as well. You know, the dictator, sh oh, excuse me, the uh, new president, I forgot. It was a military coup, but we're not allowed to say that because so we could keep giving them our money, although that's against the law in the United States. They're involved in this now as well. So this thing is going to destabilize the entire region, and you're going to start seeing blowback big time. Yeah, I want to I want to continue this as we come back from the break. Uh, as you pointed out, this was Egypt's Vietnam. The question is, will it be another Vietnam for America? Will America get pulled into this conflict along with Saudi Arabia, our close ally? Stay with us. We'll be talking to Gerald Salenti of Trends. By now you know that trendsresearch.com. We've been talking about the situation in Yemen, and of course, the United States government has been there for quite some time with an assassination campaign. And as part of that, we've had a massive number of civilian casualties, innocent people dying. Of course, in Pentagon speak, we have a disposition matrix that caused collateral damage. I guess that's just the way we would dismiss all of this pain and suffering that we're causing. All of the uh, pushback, the blowback that is going to be coming our way from people that we have oppressed and attacked. And now we're doing this. As part of Saudi Arabia's being sold as uh, being against the Iranians, but Gerald predicted this six years ago in Trends Research, and we're going to get back to that in just a moment. Before we do, I want to let you know that we now have Super Male Vitality back in stock. It was sold out. We had it on special beginning of the year, so it's been sold out for several weeks, but it's now back in a new formulation. Uh, it's new, more powerful, more enhanced, and we're getting very good feedback. We've had a lot of reviews. We put both the good and the bad reviews up on the site. We've got uh, over 90% positive. People are saying that the, a lot of people are saying they find it as replacement to coffee in the morning for energy. So that's uh, Super Male Vitality. You can find that at InfoWarsLife.com. Gerald, you were pointing out just before in the uh, last segment that uh, the Egypt has already gone into Yemen once, decided that they would be able to put that down. Uh, it was Egypt's Vietnam. I think it's very interesting, especially as we see this uh, training that's going on with Jade Helm and others. Over and over again, we see that uh, the big uh, the big militaries as part of this asymmetric warfare, they're losing these wars again and again and again. Even though they have the massive military equipment, the massive armies, people who are being oppressed will fight to the last. Not to say that there won't be a massive casualty, it won't be very unbalanced, but uh, they will continue to fight. Because uh, they're the ones who are being oppressed. They're the ones who are being invaded. They're the ones who are being called insurgents in their own country. Uh, I don't think this is going to go well, but, but Gerald, uh, do you think we're going to get drawn into this conflict? Is it going to be another uh, Vietnam for us? In Yemen? I, don't, I don't think with so-called boots on the ground. They like bombing, you know, mm -hmm. droning and bomb strikes. And it also should be, you made a good point, David. In that you said, despite all this money being spent, and uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in paraphrasing what you said, there is no victories to show for it. Yeah, exactly right. All right, now let's get this straight, okay? Everybody that's listening, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, Iraq, 
all losing deadly ventures. I th believe I read it on, on um, Prison Planet uh, that you had a post up there that what, according to these uh, physicians, the social responsibility, some two million people have been killed in the last 10 years because mm -hmm. the United States and its coalition of the willing, willingly slaughtering innocent people under the guise of bringing freedom and democracy to these countries. Is that correct? That's right. You know, we inflict mega death on people and what we wind up getting is mega debt to the military industrial complex and the bankers that push us into this war, isn't it, Gerald? Well, you nailed it again. Mega debt. The United States cannot find $500 million worth of armaments and equipment that they left in Yemen. <laughs> I'm not making this up. They just reported this about a month ago. $500 million. Hey, those roads got a lot of potholes on it. You, the trains can't run on time. We have money to send over to foreign nations and lose it. And one losing event after another, and again, $500 million. Oh, and by the way, Saudi Arabia and Ducking, they were the biggest importer last year of defensive military equipment, some $6.5 billion worth. So yeah, that's what it's about. It's about feeding the military industrial complex, isn't it, Gerald? You know, there was a report that came out. It was uh, CNS News point out that $1.2 trillion in taxes, a record number of taxes just through February, and yet that still didn't cover the bill. We still had a $386 billion deficit. So we're not making the world freer. We're making ourselves into debt slaves to the military industrial complex and the bankers. Yes. You know, what's going on now with, um, you know, just today, we, or late, last night it was announced that Australia signed on to the uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank that's being headed by China. They're going to have $100 billion into it. That's bigger than the World Bank. And, yeah. of course, they weren't going to do it. So the business of China... Hang on, Gerald. we got to take a break. We're going to be right back. Gerald Salenti, TrendsResearch.com. Trends Journal. We'll be right back. Of course, we're talking about, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Glenn Greenwald sent out a tweet saying, you know, that you're pretty deep into empire when they can start a new war and nobody even thinks it's news anymore. Well, Gerald Salenti thinks that it's news. I think it's news. Actually, Gerald Salenti has been talking about this specific incident six years ago in Trends uh, Journal. He was talking about how uh, uh, this was going to happen, that Saudi Arabia was going to escalate things by going into Yemen, and now it has happened. And we're talking about the, the implications of that, but uh, Gerald, you sent us a video uh, about Obama talking about the success they've had in Yemen. Set that up for us and we'll play that video. Oh, we've lost Gerald. Gerald, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, good. I was just going to say, you sent us a uh, video about Obama talking about uh, what they've been able to do in Yemen as an accomplishment. Set, set that up for us and we'll play that video. Yes, this is from September 10th as Obama's announcing that we're not going back into Iraq. No, no, no. We're only going to save them Yazidis on the mountain, folks. No, we're not going to go back there and run airstrikes all the time and bomb Syria. We're just going to save them Yazidis on the mountain, and it's an anti-terrorist move. And by the way, he talks about his other great successes. So let's listen to that. We've targeted al-Qaeda's affiliate in Yemen and recently eliminated the top commander of its affiliate in Somalia. This counterterrorism campaign will be waged through a steady, relentless effort to take out ISIL wherever they exist using our air power and our support for partners' forces on the ground. This strategy of taking out terrorists who threaten us while supporting partners on the front lines is one that we have successfully pursued in Yemen and Somalia for years, and it is consistent with the approach I outlined earlier this year. To use force against anyone who threatens America's core interests, but to mobilize partners wherever possible to address broader challenges to international order. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, we're uh, we're 
Al Qaeda's partners in Syria. Many people said we were operating as Al Qaeda's air force in Syria, but of course uh, we're now against uh, Al Qaeda in Yemen. Is what he's telling us, right? <laughs> well, well, what he's talking about are the victories that he's had in Yemen. <laughs> yeah, great yeah. victory. Yeah, great victory. They pulled out all the troops. They closed down the embassy and lost five hundred million dollars worth of arms there. And here he is with all that arrogance bragging about the success we've had with our partners in Yemen. Our partner, another general Hadi, another dictator, another you know, military madman, our partners. And yeah. by the way, they keep getting away with it. And yeah. they keep doing it. Yeah, I guess they're going to find now that uh, uh, when their partners go into Yemen, their Saudi partners, they're going to be fi finding that they're going to be fighting people with uh, the weapons that we left behind when we bugged out. Exactly. Yeah. And and again, you know, I was, I, we were cutting, when we were taking a break before, I was mentioning what's going on with China and the AAIB, the uh, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. And that the, if you look at America's policy in Asia, what is it? Pivot to Asia, more military reach. And what's China's and, and the Asians' policy? More business. When are we going to get out of this military mentality of more war? And that's all we keep selling as our economy keeps going. Now, you saw the numbers last week that came out on durable goods. You saw the GDP numbers for 2014. Oh, whoopee do! It came in at, what, 2.2 percent after trillions of dollars pumped into the market through quantitative easing and record low interest rates. And what are we doing? Getting involved in more wars? And who can get away with this? How, if I if the president is there September 10th bragging, bragging about our success in Yemen with our partner and poof, the place is up in smoke. Yeah, yeah, no sooner than he finished the speech, essentially. I guess it's kind of like his uh, transparency that he was going to have, uh, Gerald. You know, we were going to uh, know everything that his administration was doing. And you know, they're the ones coming after the freedom of the press more than all the other administrations combined. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this, this breaks down. And one of the things that you said when you were talking about this uh, six years ago, uh, the very very likely that uh, there's going to be terrorism uh, in Saudi Arabia. You point out there's a large uh, Yemeni population already in place in Saudi Arabia. Uh, this could blow back in terms of the uh, uh, the Yemenis going on the offensive. And that could have massive repercussions for oil and for the economy worldwide because the economy is essentially based on oil. As the price of oil goes up, uh, economic activity plummets, doesn't it? Yes, and that's what you're going to start to see. They're not going to sit back and take this. Who would? And if, they, if somebody else was attacking us, we go back and attack them. I mean, can't people get this in their head? And all this Arab Little League has done is cause destabilization throughout the area. I'll never forget, David, I was on China Today, and along with the um, Washington bureau chief, of Al Jazeera. Now, Al Jazeera is owned by the Qatar government, and they're the Sunnis, right? So this guy is making the case for why the United States has to overthrow Gaddafi. And this is going on for an hour. And I, finally, I said to him, listen, I said, I'm tired of hearing this. I said, here you are, someone from Qatar, saying that the Americans have to get involved in this Libyan war. I said, why don't you pack up your gear and take your wife and your kids and yourself and go lead the charge? Well, there's this guy talking with this perfect English accent. I guess the bureau chief was trained in the UK. And then this cat lost it at the end. He starts <laughs> yelling and screaming. Look what our Nobel Peace Prize winner, piece of garbage, has done with Libya, along with Samantha Powers, Susan Rice, and Hillary Clinton in overthrowing the Gaddafi government. And oh, look yeah. what happened last week at the, what happened in Tunisia with these Islamic fundamentalists who the United States and the Arab Little League supported in overthrowing Gaddafi as they blew up this museum, or not blew up the museum, they blew up people 
in this museum in Tunisia. Where did they come from? They came from Libya. Where are they going into, into Syria, into Iraq? It's all from the destabilization being caused by the Arab League and the United States support of these mass murderers going into foreign countries and trying to overthrow the governments. Yeah, of course, uh, the net result of our policies in Libya is to basically to turn it into an arms market for terrorism, a way that we can supply uh, covertly our terrorist allies in Syria and other places. Maybe that was the design from the beginning. What do you think, uh, Gerald? Uh, but, but I want to talk about the budget. You know, we, we have uh, this massive defense budget. We just had uh, Rand Paul make a very controversial proposal. He proposed adding $190 billion to the defense budget. And here's one of the perhaps only voices that could stand up to say enough is enough on the defense bill, but he doesn't do it. And he actually is even more responsible, though, than the rest of the guys who are going to be throwing their hat in the ring for president. You got Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz uh, signing on to that, but not offsetting it with any cost. At least you could say Rand Paul is trying to offset the $190 billion increase, trying to offset it with $106 billion cuts in foreign aid and other things like that. But I guess the question is... Will it never end? Do we have anybody that is going to push back and say, how big is enough? And once we get to the size that the defense budget is, as we were just talking about earlier in the show, I think it's a real threat to the safety of Americans. And, of course, it's a threat to our prosperity. We cannot afford to have this kind of defense spending. Of course we can't. It's, it's destroying the country. Again, you know, Eisenhower warned us about it. And I, you know, I'm sick of these guys throwing out, well, I'm going to protect the homeland. Pack up your stuff and go lead the charge. Send your kids. Hey, is Obama's girls, when they get out of college or before they get into college, are they going to join the service? How many of these senators' sons and daughters are fighting? Everybody that wants war, go to the foreign country where you're leading, where you're where you're bringing war to and lead the charge. I've had it with these little boy chicken hawks with big mouths and cojones the size of mothballs telling us where we have to go fight. I'm sick of it. And they are all traitors to the founding fathers of this nation from Washington to Jefferson to Madison to Franklin to Adams. No foreign entanglements. And what do they have to show for it? Nothing but loss. If anybody could add up some successes, I'd be happy to look at them. In the meantime, our nation's going down the crapper. Look at the numbers. What yeah. do you see? It's you pretty see amazing when you look at... When you look at this increase, Gerald, this is more than most nations of the world have in a total defense budget. Way more than most of them have. It's way more than probably about 40% of the countries have in terms of a, a gross uh, domestic product, this $190 billion increase. It's absolutely insane. As you pointed out, the founders knew this was going to destroy the country. James Madison said, he said, if tyranny and oppression ever comes to this land, it'll be in the guise of fighting a foreign enemy. That's the way it's coming. And it's bankrupting it's this country. It's in front of us. I'm disgusted with all these guys. How could it change? Look, David, if you had a new member, a new guy that was the, running the Bloods or the Crips, is it going to change how the Bloods and the Crips operate? And I don't say that sarcastically. The Republicans and the Democrats are murderers and thieves. How many more people do they have to murder around the world in the name of freedom and democracy? And how much more of our money do they have to steal in the name of the bailouts, too big to fails, loan guarantees, and special tax breaks to our buddies? We're not going to get it from the Bloods and the Crips, or as people like to be more proper, calling them the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, they're a disgusting group of losers and thieves. Oh, as you pointed out, Gerald, uh, with the Asian bank, you said uh, China is getting involved in business, and all we're doing is you're shipping arms around. 
our business now as a country is arms shipment. We are the arms merchant of the world. And we're fleecing the American public. We're destroying our wealth as well as we're going to be destroying our own individual freedom. Just as we see with this Operation Jade Helm, they are... Training, I believe, not just with this drill, but of course, I think these these wars that we're seeing in the Middle East, I think those are training uh, for what they're going to do here at home eventually. I agree. You agree. See, this is this going to collapse. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it's being held up by record low interest rates. They haven't raised interest rates since 2006. We've had 0% interest rates for six years. Now they're doing it over in Europe as well. Do you know why the markets are up today? China's announcing maybe they're going to start pushing more dough into the system because their real estate bubbles collapsed. At some point, this Ponzi scheme is going to fall apart. And as I always say, when people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And people have lost most everything. They've lost their opportunity in this country. And it's going to get a lot worse. So what are they going to do? They're going to clamp down on us. We the people, it's, it's a multi, look, it's fascism. It's the merger of state and corporate powers. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not making that up. When you see what happens with too big to fail, it's the merger of state and corporate powers. When you see bailouts and bailing out their friends in the business, it's the merger of state and corporate powers. It's in front of our eyes. And what we see going on in Europe, we see uh, just about a month and a half ago, we had Greenspan come out and said, yeah, Greece is going to leave the EU. The only way we can keep the EU from coming apart is if we make it not just a trade agreement, but if we make it a sovereign United States of Europe. And that's what we had uh, with the largest bond seller, PIMCO, said that over the, over just at the end of last week, saying that uh, we need a United States of Europe is the only way that the EU is going to survive. So these trade agreements, these austerity programs they're putting on people, this is all targeted towards pushing them to a political union, not just an economic trade zone. Oh, you got it. And, you know, I mean, nobody in this country, barely other than your show, mine, you know, the people that are concerned about this, talk about the Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Transatlantic Agreement as well. This has nothing to do, very little to do with trade. All it has to do with multinationals having the rights over sovereign nations. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are facts. And we, the people in this land of freedom and democracy, are not allowed to read it. Yeah. No, no, we can't see it because the multinationals are putting the deal together, so we can't read it. How's that for transparency, huh? Yeah, exactly. And, of course, now they're taking the mask off. They're showing us and talking about it. We've had uh, Petraeus say, you know, what comes after America? North America. And he talks about the North American Union. He says we're 20 years into it. They're taking the mask off. They're showing people that the North American Union was all about a political consolidation all along. And now they're taking the mask off and they're showing people that the European Union was all about a political consolidation all along as well. And the way that they are going to push these political consolidations in is with economic hardship, as we see starting to develop throughout uh, the European Union. Exactly. And by Petraeus, what a disgusting human yeah. being he is. Yeah. And, and look what happened with him. He gets caught, what, giving classified information to his girlfriend. And he gets a slap on the wrist. Yeah, exactly. And this is a guy that's the head of the CIA. Mm -hmm. Anybody else does it, like Bradley Manning or anybody else, you know, they're in jail and doing hard time. But hey, when you're at the top, again, going back to fascism, that's what happens in a fascist nation. And, and I think, Gerald, it's, it's important to point out that uh, he wasn't, you know, Bradley Manning and these other people, they were exposing information that was showing criminal wrongdoing. Edward Snowden was showing criminal wrongdoing of our government, and yet they come after the whistleblower. They don't do anything about the people who are exposed uh, committing criminal acts. And yet Petraeus's was not a whistleblowing action when he released that information, so he gets a pass. It's only the people who are exposing criminal actions in this corrupt government that they come after. Yeah. And, and again, when you're talking about the North American alliance and, and NAFTA, of course, begun under Bill Clinton, it's a multinational takeover. And it's just going to keep going more and more in that direction. You know, when you think about the Asian Inve Infrastructure Investment Bank, infrastructure investment is anathema to America. We, China, China invests 
about 6.5%, 8.5% of their GDP each year to infrastructure. The United States invests the grand total of 0.065%. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Stay with us. We're going to be right back. Gerald Salenti, Trends Journal and TrendsResearch.com. We'll be right back with Gerald Salenti. Gerald Tell us about solutions. What can we do about this? When I mean, you talk about how bad the uh, military industrial complex is, the government that just continues to grow unchecked, even the most, uh, the people who are portraying themselves as fiscally conservative, they want to grow up by $190 billion. What, what is the solution to all of this? Well, I think it's honoring thy founding fathers and going back to what this country was based upon. And I know that people say, oh, there were a lot of terrible things. I know. None of us are perfect. This was the land of opportunity, and it was the, 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 and the envy of the world for a lot of the great things that happened here. So in the basis of that, no foreign entanglements. Close all the bases overseas. Seal the borders. We got enough. 316 million people, high unemployment rates, low income because of all the, the cheap labor coming in. And I've been writing about this since 1985. You know, the numbers are all there. The more cheap labor that comes in, the lower the standard of living. And these trade agreements that are not trade agreements at all, they're available so that the multinationals could exploit slave labor overseas and bring the product over here and sell it to us. So number one, Bring the troops home, no foreign entanglements. Use these troops to seal the border. Take that money that's being wasted and blowing up the world and rebuild America. Look at our infrastructure. It's a joke. You go to, you go to Asia, you go to Europe, and you come back when I fly back into JFK. Oh, my God, I can't believe it. What a disgrace. You know, they're going down the parkway, litter everywhere, a beat up terminal. So let's rebuild America. Number two, put the laws back in place that leveled the playing field. It was what happened during the 19th of the 20th century. People like Teddy Roosevelt knew that the robber barons, if they had their hands on all the dough, would rob it from everybody else. So they put in place the Robbins Apartment Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, Clayton Antitrust Act that leveled the playing field. Young people have no idea what it used to be like. They think there was always a Walmart or a Target. They think that there was always a CVS and a Rite Aid or a Staples and a Home Depot or a Lowe's and, a, and, 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 and somebody else that does all the business and put out all the mom and pops. Absolutely. We're out we're of time, Gerald Salenti. And it's unfortunate we no longer have mom and pops. Thank you for joining us. For Gerald Salenti, trendsresearch.com. Visit GCNlive.com today.